intensity like sex, hotcakes, and gangbusters sells easily. It's one of those true markers in an actor's repertoire of greatness that has set some of the most successful performers of all time apart. Sure, range is great, and the ability to play a broad range of complex cerebral characters is all well and good, but that's not what really gets pulses racing, is it? We as audiences want to see Al Pacino screaming down a camera lens with his face covered in powder. We want to see Charlize Theron transforming into a menacing, disarming angel of death for Monster, and we want to see Daniel Day-Lewis applying every ounce of his method acting into drinking your goddamn milkshake in There Will Be blood. At this point though, all of those performers are kind of known for their intense roles, and if actors manage to pull off a performance of sublime intensity that comes somewhat out of the blue, it can knock our wigs clean off. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 intense upcoming movie performances you're not ready for. Number 10, Joe Pesci, The Irishman. When you think of the legendary Joe Pesci, you probably think of a few things. Firstly, his Muttley-esque performance as Harry in Home Alone since it's a goddamn institution, but then far darker, more intense, and much swearier performances in Goodfellas and Casino. Pesci might have been good at being a funny guy, but he was even better at making other characters think he was going to smash their heads in for calling him one. And while I'm here, you definitely need to check out his brief flirtation with the music world, as Wise Guy is one of the best worst tracks of the 20th century, just thank me later. He's officially been retired since 1999, apart from one major role in true-life brothel drama Love Ranch, a voice performance and a cameo, but rather wonderfully, he's back working with Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese for The Irishman. And given that he's playing mob boss Russell Buffalino, you can expect some of the usual fireworks. The difference this time out, though, is that Buffalino isn't the explosive device that Tommy DeVito and Nicky Santoro were, which means we'll be getting a different level of intensity from Pesci this time round. Number 9. Whacking Phoenix, The Joker For all the concerns about the idea of a Joker origin movie and the potential demystification of one of Hollywood's most prized character brands, I mean, it happened to Solo, so it definitely could have happened here, Todd Phillips' strange Joker project actually looks pretty damn phenomenal. It helps, of course, that they cast Joaquin Phoenix in the lead role. He's a character actor well-versed in deep, intense immersion, and everything we've seen from the marketing material suggests that his descent into madness and villainy is going to be totally captivating. There's a quiet creepiness to his performance as Arthur Fleck that has been highlighted so far, but it will be his triumphant, grotesque blossoming into the Joker that will offer the most intense element of his double role. And honestly, it could be astonishing, maybe even Oscar-worthy. Hey, a guy can dream anywhere. Number 8. Melissa McCarthy, The Little Mermaid Right, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I know that you've seen the title and run a mile to the comments already, saying that choosing Melissa McCarthy is one thing, but for a performance in The Little Mermaid is something else entirely, and it might look like I've lost my mind, but wait a second and hear me out. There was some controversy around the key casting in The Little Mermaid, because some people have no imagination, and some people, quite frankly, shouldn't be allowed online. But Halle Bailey's casting as the titular Ariel isn't the only news on that front. While the deal for her to play the villain hasn't been completed just yet, Melissa McCarthy was announced as being in line to play Ursula the Sea Witch for the live action adaptation, and it whipped up a storm. Singer Lizzo had campaigned for the role and drag artist Ginger Minge, the true perfect casting in my opinion, were held up as better choices, but McCarthy is legitimately great. She's more than just a pratfalling comedy actor when she's given the right roles, and Ursula will demand a huge caricature a performance that could be transformative for her if it goes through. And after all, this is about intense performances you don't expect, and it doesn't get any more unexpected than this one. Number 7, Woody Harrelson, Venom 2. Venom might have been a bit of a mess, but the two most interesting things about it, without a shadow of a doubt, were Tom Hardy's incredible performance as Eddie Brock and the delightfully obscene Venom, and also the tease of Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy. Sure, he looked a little ridiculous and a lot like Carrot Top, in fact, but the whole point of that tease was to set up the sequel appearance of Carnage. And if that means we get a Venom vs. Carnage movie, Harrelson could get away with looking however the hell he likes as long as he can go totally nuts. 
because even from that brief flash of him, Cassidy looks like an opportunity for Harrelson to really let loose and not give a single solitary F and hopefully he won't be as restrained as we are on YouTube, which not only means we'll get a better villain than the first movie, but also that we'll get to see a Nick Cage-esque performance from him, and who doesn't want that? Actually, you know what, can we just get Nick Cage in this franchise as well? Please and thank you, Hollywood. Make it happen. Number 6. Dean Charles Chapman, 1917 Say what you want about Dean Charles Chapman's performance as crybaby Tommen Baratheon in Game of Thrones, but it was undoubtedly successful because it painted Tommen exactly as he needed to be seen. He was pathetic at times, too emotionally led and vulnerable, and while his death was tragic, it wasn't entirely unearned. And it takes a lot to translate all of that into the performance of a child. Chapman now has the world at his feet and has astutely chosen a handful of great films, including Blinded by the Light, The King, and Here Are the Young Men. His real star maker role, though, should come in the lead of Sam Mendes' war epic 1917, which he'll share with George McKay, which promises to be as hard-hitting as it is packed with incredible acting talent. The lead role of a young soldier will also transform Chapman and push his acting skills to the very limit, and it's a huge opportunity for him. Number 5. Chris Evans, Knives Out Now that Chris Evans has spent the best part of a decade playing Captain America, you could be forgiven for co-opting the image of him as a kindly, patriotic hero who practically sweats wholesomeness for all of his roles. Perhaps because he's now left Cap behind, though, Evans is about to branch out in a big way by playing a douchebag. Admittedly, he has kind of done it before thanks to the Fantastic Four, but his role in Ryan Johnson's Agatha Christie-like whodunit Knives Out looks to push his likability factor to the limit. From the trailer, Evans looks almost like he's playing a sociopath in the vein of American Psycho's Patrick Bateman, and in true murder mystery fashion, he's being set up as the obvious suspect. All of this and the bravado the film already exudes suggests that we're in for a performance from Evans that is both intensely loathsome and perversely likable. Number 4. Shia LaBeouf, Honey Boy the idea of anyone greenlighting a movie about Shia LaBeouf's past as a child star wouldn't ordinarily stand out as a huge draw for movie studios or audiences, but there is genuinely something there behind the concept. And it's not just an act of self-righteous self-promotion either, as LaBeouf identified the process as pretty harrowing and it's been called an incredible piece of artistic therapy. In it, LaBeouf plays the key role of his own father, or at least a version of him, while his stand-in, Otis Lott, attempts to mend the relationship with his law-breaking, alcohol-abusing dad, James, over the course of a decade. It sounds like it should be a vanity project, but reports out of Sundance were incredible, and it's currently listed as 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, according to the critics who saw it early. Likewise, LaBeouf's performance is apparently both harrowing and astounding, which, to be honest, is kind of something we've always known he was capable of achieving. Number 3. Tom Hardy, Fonzo You already know that Tom Hardy is an exceptional actor who does particularly well when he's asked to do something over the top and intense. He's earned himself a chameleon-like reputation thanks in part to his incredible bodily transformations, but this is no mere master of disguise. He has the substance beneath the surface. And that's what makes his upcoming performance as Al Capone in Josh Trank's Fonzo so intriguing. And even better, we've got a physical transformation as you'd expect, because Hardy plays Capone during his decline thanks to dementia in his older years. That's going to make for a testing performance to say the least, and seeing how Hardy balances the legend of a monster trapped in his own deteriorating mind makes it one of the most compelling movies set to release this year. Number 2. Timothy Chalamet, The King We've gone far beyond the point where anyone could reasonably call Timothy Chalamet a breakout star, because he's now a genuine, bona fide superstar who has Little Women, Dune, and the next film by Wes Anderson on his slate. Possibly his most challenging upcoming role, though, is as the lead in David Michaud's adaptation of Shakespeare's Henriad, The King. Even if you're not a big Shakespeare buff, you still might be vaguely aware of Henry V's once more into the breach, dear friends, once more rousing speech at the Siege of Harfleur, and then the iconic We Few, We Happy Few, We Band of Brothers speech at Agincourt. 
Now, just imagine that it's Chalamet and not me drawing on every ounce of his zeal to inspire his men and himself onwards to victory while grandstanding those two literary legends. It's enough to get the hairs on your very bones standing to attention. And if you've only had him pitched as a pretty boy sub DiCaprio flash in the pan, give Beautiful Boy or Miss Stevens a viewing and just see how much range he actually has. And speaking of the king, one of his co-stars has got another fairly huge role on his plate very soon too. You might have heard of it. Number one, Robert Pattinson, the Batman. Oh, what a world we're in when a major Batman casting picks up so much controversial attention with fans wailing at how divisive and unfair it is in the face of other possibilities. I mean, it's not like it happened before with Michael Keaton, Jim Carrey, Heath Ledger, Jared Leto, and Ben Affleck among so many others, is it? At this point, it's just kind of part of the Batman production process for this kind of backlash to happen, and hopefully, Patterson's excellent work so far will blow away those who seem to think that he's just that pale, sparkly kid from Twilight. The Batman director, Matt Reeves, is promising a bold vision true to the image of Batman as a great detective and seeing a young Batman finding his way, while building up his mythology of fear is also going to be amazing. And so is Robert Pattinson, who is a far, far better actor, particularly in intense roles, than the criticism gives him credit for. So that's our list. What do you guys think down in the comments below? Are you looking forward to these intense performances? And do you think any will catch you by surprise? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.